Hi, good afternoon. My name is Anna Fuente, and this is Anthony Ferrazzi and, and Michael um, Martinez. And we're here to present our final robot design project, which is the wireless camera box. Um, pretty much wanted to take an existing um, wheeled platform, which was the robot, and add a camera and tracks in it so that we can still maintain the small size and compactness of the robot and um, have it do surveillance and sort of reconnaissance missions as well. Um, These are some of the components that um, we added to the boba. Uh, we have a camera that was small enough um, to mount on the cannon tilt um, mounting bracket that went with the boba. Also, we have a Bluetooth module and um, LEDs in order to use in the dark. And also, we needed an antenna receiver so that whatever the camera saw, we'd be able to have um, seen it in a, in a laptop as well. And now Michael will continue with describing more of the components in the construction. Well, even though we have um, a small uh, payload in our systems and we're going, just going to do surveillance, um, we did a structural analysis in order to um, see how the system will react if we apply more load to it. Basically, we did a static analysis to the chassis of the, of the boy bulb and <clears throat> we applied a critical load about 20 pounds, which is much more load than the load that actually uh, currently exists in our system. We, it turns out pretty good. Some of the results that we got uh, shows that uh, the minimum uh, deformation, the maximum deformation distribution is about 0 0.8 uh, millimeters, which is insignificant. And the factor of safety that we obtain is just of over one, a value of 1.03. Um, one of the reasons why the factor of safety is just over one is because the, the chassis itself is composed of multiple holes and slots, which creates stress concentration. And that's one of the reasons why the factor of safety is pretty low, but still safe. Uh, for the construction, we started to do um, basically the first step that we did, we replaced the wheel system into a track system. As you can see in this picture, um, all the wheels were attached to a side aluminum plate and also we attached a gear to, a, to the servo system. And in this picture, it shows um, how the, the pan and tilt um, kit was attached to the platform. We use uh, a standoff um, accessories from previous projects, and we were able to attach it and center it to the in the center of the platform. Here, in this view, you can see um, how each server um, for the pan and tilt kit is connected to pin 14 and 15. Well, this is the complete assembly of our um, wireless bot. As you can see, uh, the tracks are already attached to the system. The camera, the mini wireless camera, is uh, attached to the pan and tilt uh, kit. Um, the camera is powered by using a 9 volts battery, and the battery rests on top of one of the servos. We also use uh, LEDs just when we uh, travel in the dark. Uh, we, uh, this is a view where it shows the Bluetooth module that we use and how it is connected to the main board. It's the one that we are going to use to communicate with um, our wireless board. And now Anthony is going to talk about the controller software. Um, all right, like Mike just mentioned, we used um, what is called the Easy Bluetooth module connected to the um, Bobot system, which uses a BS2 stamp which is programmed using a basic stamp editor. Um, control of the bot and the camera were done directly through the basic stamp editor through its debug menu, where in which the Bluetooth module sends signals to the computer and receives them in return. Um, I guess I will, uh, in a second, I'll show you a little bit of, of how that actually works. Um, Upon construction, we um, had to do a little bit of initial testing to figure out what the best way to move the robot would be. Um, initially, I wanted to do something um, where we just held a key and had the robot move indefinitely until we let off the key, but um, settings on the computer prevented us from doing so. 
we would have to do a little bit more development into the program to figure out how to do that. Um, we had to do also alignment of the LEDs, otherwise um, you'd have two lights off in the distance and not really have anything to look at. So we were able to easily mount them to where we have a nice spotlight about 10, 20 feet in front of the robot. Um, we did try to use some infrared LEDs so that we can have some sort of a night vision, um, but the combination between the camera and the LEDs pre proved too weak to pick up anything using those. Next slide, please. Now. Um, right now, I'll do a basic uh, demonstration of the movement and pan and tilt of the robot. Um, I'll switch over here so that you can see what I'm seeing on my computer. Hopefully it comes up, there it is. Um, right here down on the bottom left, you'll see the basic stamp editor. I'll turn that on first. Um, I'll go into a debug menu. Select my outgoing uh, communication port, which happens to be COM6. And much any key will initialize the robot. Plug in the camera as well. See what we're looking at. Rather, what the user will look at. So basically, what we ended up doing was having a couple different keys to use for the movement of the platform and the pan and tilt of the camera. Um, first off, I guess I'll start with the platform movement. We can go forward with um, the E key. That should make it right about to the edge of the table. There we go. Backwards would be the C key. And again, it goes for a specified duration. Um, for shorter movements forward, we can use W key. For a short movement backwards would be the X key. Uh, rotations would then be a almost 180 degrees with the A key. And back the other way would be with the F key. And just as with the forward and backwards, we can go with short rotation left and right with uh, S and D keys respectively. Bring it around real close. And again, now with the pan and tilt very similar, we can go straight up with Y, down again with N, left and right with uh, G and K. Short movements, left and right, would be H and J. Bring it back. And up and down with U and M. What's that? Um, a little bit more on some of more of the advanced uh, testing, and I will take care of that. Now, we designed uh, further experiments to see the capacity of the camera and the robot as well. Um, first one is the light demo. We wanted to see how effective the lights were with um, should have a demo there. But as you can see, some of the um, snapshots of the light, it's pretty focused on uh, whatever is in front of it. So it gives you a good visual of what it's looking at in the dark. Um, as well, the surveillance tape. Um, we had some demos of surveillance. Um, first, we wanted to see the range of how far our robot could go while we're sitting down and testing it. And pretty much the robot, as you can see on the right side, there's a, a glass wall. We went around that, and pretty much if the distance was about 55 feet, the robot was able to go. We still had good communication with the camera, because the camera's distance ranges to 300 feet. But really what limited our communication was the Bluetooth communication as well. Uh, we did different sort of uh, surveillance tests of other than the obvious of just you know using it for surveillance, also it's good if you know if you're trying to keep an eye on a child or a parent who's preoccupied doing something else, sends a robot into a room and sort of keeps an eye on the child while they're in the room playing video games and such. Um, another important test we did was to see the terrain it can go through, and um, here in this video was showing was how 
it went over the rocks. It seemed like it almost lost its balance because of the camera in the front, but it still kept its balance and it went straight through onto the, to the tile floor. Um, finally, our budget for everything was um, $347. Obviously, the most expensive component was the boba, and um, everything was split amongst the team. And for conclusion, um, really we could have probably used a stronger communication um, between the controller and the platform. Something we could have looked at which um, would have helped was also maybe doing a Wi-Fi communication, but due to budget constraints and time, um, we opted more for the Bluetooth as well. Uh, also maybe a tighter tracking system for the Bobot to go over various types of terrains and maybe more testing maybe, and also um, an advanced program development such as the iPhone and being able to program instead of basic staff editor using C++. And, um, and we're open to any questions.